So yesterday I made a series of videos um, with this system that you see now, but instead of the actual car, I just had a pair of motors. So today I decided to make a video with uh, the actual motors hooked up and a uh, multimeter hooked up set to the amperage measurement mode. So you can um, see how many amps the whole system draws off of the LiPo. So like I explained before, this is a... Uh, 12 volt ish lipo. It's 11.1, .1, but a three cell lipo should have around 12.6 volts when fully charged. And to a voltage regulator and a large switch that sends the 12 volts from here to the motor controller, which I built and you can see poorly soldered. And um, this controls the um, this signal off this JST to this breadboard controls the uh, draw the motor in the rear, and this controls the steering motor. And the signal over there is um, off of this 8-bit eight, er, eight shift register, which is connected to the Arduino directly, which receives a signal from this XB, which is, this is the sync LED, which is pulsing, and which is, the XB is connected to this one, so there's no wired connection here. This is only providing power. I could do it off of batteries, but I don't have enough batteries to do that. But, um, you can see the sync timing is pretty close to try to get it both in frame. But the timing's pretty close between the two, this LED and this LED. But anyways, the joystick um, control, let's see if I can get it frame. The joystick, you can see the four LEDs over here pulsing when uh, each direction is activated. And um, these two LEDs make, measure magnitude. So, um, like the how far that this is uh, moved from its center state are measured by those two which in turn are sent as a pulse width modulation signal to this chip which is a uh, L, L928N uh, 15 watt multiple motor driver which is uh, soldered, the package is soldered in there um, like I said to this connector, you can, this schematics on the website which is then fed finally to the car which is just two standard brushed motors, one here and one in there. And um, so yeah, here's a demo. Sit down. Here's a demo of that all working. So try to get this in frame. But so like I said, here's the controller. So I'll drive it forward. So there's like 10% speed, and I'll slowly bring it to max. So that was max speed. So that's forward, and as you can see, I have a variable control, so I can go very slow or very quickly. And um, here's re reverse. So you can see I have variable control over speed and direction, which is great about this little chip. It does. This is actually pretty hot. I don't have a. Uh, I could get a actually. I could get a uh, a thermistor, which I think I have a few of left. Okay, I could hypothetically just uh, attach one of this, maybe into that little hole there, uh, and just get the heat reading off of that, and then use that to control. Let's say like a uh, here we go, like a little tiny five volt fan, which could maybe change the heat, but. That might be a waste of power because, I mean, this is all, this is a nice aluminum heat sink on here anyways. But, so that was the forward and reverse, and so here's left and right. It doesn't really matter if I have variable control over that, you can hear it. But it's basically got state left and state right. That's just the nature of the car. So now just to show you the current draw. So, uh, like I said before, this is a, um, I'll show you it. This is a... Um, pretty huge battery, 11.1 volt, 3 cell, which 3 cell is technically like 12.6, I want to say 12.6 volts, but um, 5,000 milliamps, so it's pretty huge. I haven't charged it fully, I think, ever since I got it. It's just been great, but I'm going to charge it soon so we don't get lipo, the, uh, the polymers to destroy themselves. But anyways, so here's my crappy little multimeter, but it works fine, gives me a relative amperage draw, no problem. So... I'll increase the rear motor and you can see how much it's drawing.
So around 0.7 amps, which is expected. So I'll give you reverse too. You can see that little spike there. I'll do that again because I increased that speed a lot quicker. So uh, it took a lot more current to get it moving at the same rate. So if I quickly reverse... If I go quickly to the back and forth to the extremes, it draws around 1.2 amps, which is absolutely nothing for this battery. This battery can do probably, it can do a 30C discharge rate, which is 7 or 8 amps, I think, which is way more than is necessary for this, but eventually for the tricopter, it's going to be just around where I want it to be. And um, so then I'll do the draw from turning left and right. So around half an amp. So now I'll do it all together. And then I'll do, I'll just, so, so that I was going like this to get both extremes because this is left, right, speed, reverse, speed, forward. So now I'll just make noise like this so it draws a lot. So the most I saw there was like, uh, like 1 point, or 3 amps, which is a lot, but it's very manageable. I think that the regulator... When I get the 5 volt regulator in, so this is power, this board's powered too, as I explained in the last video, it's going to be no problem. The battery's going to have no problem keeping up with that. But, um, yeah, so, switch this stuff off. So, uh, thank you for watching, and, uh, if you find it interesting, leave a comment. Check out the blog post, because I wrote a huge blog post the other day detailing all of this, because, um, starting to get into production, uh, like getting, getting close to finishing this stage of the robot, at least. Which is which is going to be pretty exciting, but there's still a few things I have to iron out with. Um, I sometimes am, I'm still having a little trouble with the XP with a dropping connection, and um, so I want to make sure that's totally ironed out before I move into the uh, copter phase of this. So, yeah, thanks for watching.